Okay, so we're back. I hope this will be the final part of R with ggplot2. This is Ryan Womack, data librarian at Rutgers University Libraries, New Brunswick Libraries. And it turns out that actually um, in reading about ggviz, um, these examples were all things that were working um, in the spring of, of 2020, but now they're not working anymore. And I read that now that ggviz is not is considered a dormant package that's not really being updated any, anymore. So I learned that these examples, um, you could go back and install a whole sequence of older compatible packages uh, to so that your R installation was you know vintage early 2020, um, but. If you're keeping up your packages up to date, these examples will not work. And the recommendation really for interactivity um, overall is to move your work to a shiny environment. That was what I read at one website. So I'm just gonna leave these uh, this code in here with this note that it's now dormant. And these don't really work uh, if you have a current um, installation of R. You might, Depend, your mileage may vary. You might um, be able to get these to work. The basic idea is that ggviz would plot uh, a graph and then give you some sliders that would interact with the graph to, for example, uh, affect the, the fineness of the smoothing that was applied to a smooth line, um, would maybe select some different options. And these, the code from lines 223 through 240 were examples of that. But I'm gonna skip over those for now and we're gonna to return to interactivity in the Shiny workshop coming up um, in the next week. So um, I will leave that. So this does happen in the R work world is that people experiment, they develop packages, but not all of them um, succeed to the point that they get long-term maintenance and upgrades. And it looks like that has happened to ggviz. Um, ggviz was, I think, perhaps one of the reasons is, you know, it was not um, the, the end all in a production environment. If you really want complete control of interactivity, you do want to move to a, a full environment like Shiny, which we'll be seeing in upcoming sessions. Um, and ggviz provided a little bit of easy functionality, uh, but we, we see now that uh, that remains incomplete. All right, so then our final example, uh, which, which should work here, is a package called ggAnimate. And what ggAnimate does is it takes ggplot graphs and links them together and creates an animation for you. So the code here runs from line 244 to line 253. Uh, everything up through 249 is just one big ggplot command uh, to draw a specific graph of the relationship between GDP and life expectancy. But what's going to happen is, and, and again with some you know specific options there, but afterwards, since we have the ggAnimate package loaded, we can run some additional commands to label each year of the data differently and transition the data over the years. Right, so it's going to automatically cycle through all the years of the data set and link them up in an animation. And we're going to see that. If I just go ahead and run that chunk of code, uh, you're going to see that it renders the graph. Takes a few seconds, may take longer on a um, laptop. Um, it links all those together, and then we should see it in a moment in our, in our viewer. I think just to be safe, I'm also going to hit stop over there. Oh, that was a mistake. Um, I should should have let it run because the stop sign, I thought the stop sign was left over from our old interactive um, graph, but it was not. So now I'm rendering it again. Um, is it moving faster this time? It's hard to say. Uh, the thing about all these these commands 
is we're seeing them in our studio, but when you run them, uh, the output is actually HTML output. And so you can dump the contents, like all these frames, you can dump them into a folder and put them on a website and have them run on a website as an animated graph the same way that they run in our studio. You don't have to be inside our studio. Um, so we can see our animation here. These are uh, life expectancy rising across the continents, um, sort of in tandem with GDP per capita. But if you look at the individual bubbles, which represent individual countries, you'll see that the, although the overall trend is clear, um, not every country experiences the same thing. You'll particularly see in the, in the top left, you'll see the impact of AIDS on Africa, where many countries um, experience this falling life expectancy effect that's pretty widespread across Af Africa. Not so much in other countries. Um, so that's GG Animate. You know, it's just an example of a nice uh, tool. We can actually pop out this graph um, to something a bit larger. And there, you know, there are lots of, of features like that that you can find in the ggplot extensions. Um, we focused on ggplot because it is super popular and has many different uh, extensions like this. Uh, but I, I want to remind people again, it's not the only way to do graphics in, in R. There are many other ways. There are many other specialized tools uh, for specific purposes. But if you're going to start with one, Start with um, ggplot because it's got ggplot has got a lot. Uh, so I've again given you an updated link to the extensions here. Uh, there's a book uh, on ggplot written by Hadley Wickham. Uh, if you wish to, you know, delve into the full details, um, I advise you to take a look at that. We have access through the Rutgers Libraries to the uh, full Springer Math and Statistics books. And you can take a look at that. Um, otherwise, I'll end here and hope you'll come back for others in this series, the next one on data wrangling, data manipulation, um, in immediately next in the series. So thanks for listening.